While it looks as though we just might have a glimmer of hope for the flaming dumpster fire that is Canada's immigration policy, by now I'm sure that you're well aware of the protests being carried out by the Indian community living in PEI. These protests were triggered when PEI announced a 25% reduction in work permits to curb the insane influx of new arrivals that have been choking the province's infrastructure and driving up the cost of living for residents. Now, it needs to be made clear that the protesters came into the country on the understanding that they were temporary students. Except that studying clearly was never their intention. They were looking for an easy backdoor, and once that backdoor was slammed shut, they hit the streets in a fit. Such a fit that, outside of their threat to starve themselves with a hunger strike, the best it could threaten residents with is this. The people of PEI will also be affected because now, they'll have to wait 20 minutes for a cup of coffee. Okay. <laughs> Wow, we're really going to have to rethink the support on that one. The protest group's leader had the following three demands as part of their mission. First, we demand to be grandfathered into the provincial nominee program system because we were already here, working on valid work permit before the new rules were implemented. It is only fair that those who were present before the changes be allowed to continue under the old system. Well, you know what's funny? If you're protesting in the streets, you're not in any position to be making demands. This is the language of entitlement. Ordinarily, I might be inclined to agree with the spirit of this demand, but given that they're on temporary student visas and therefore not citizens of Canada, they have no choice but to accept their fate. And we continue with the second one. Secondly, we call for fair PNP draws without a point system. Recently, sales and service, food sectors, and even truckers have been excluded from the PNP draws, despite our hard work and contributions. We deserve the same opportunities as other sectors, and the current point system, which requires 65 points, is nearly impossible for those under 25 to achieve. When it comes to unskilled labor, we really have no choice but to protect homegrown members of these sectors over non-residents. And this also lends itself to what Earl Nightingale always said about having value to offer. This is the luck of the draw. And we move on to the third demand. Lastly, we demand an extension to our work permits. Due to the government's changes and economic issues, our work permits were effectively wasted, causing many of us to lose our jobs. It is only fair that our work permits be renewed to compensate for the lost time and opportunities. You know, to be honest, I do feel for some of them on this last point simply because quite a few of them were left holding the bag. It is true that in the game of musical chairs, some will have to eat hay while others simply slip through the cracks and, you know, get to carry on. But if you look at the gold rushes of the past, the Canadian citizenship gold rush is no different. There was an abundance of promise for those seeking new fortunes and coming to Canada until there simply weren't any anymore. The fate of those who got snagged by that 25% reduction is, quite honestly, a cost of doing business. They decided to roll the dice on a new opportunity, and it didn't work out. And then we have another problem that isn't helping. Or, you know, maybe perhaps it is. Uh, we've got some branches of the Indian media, and I'm using that term very lightly in this case, trying to smear Canada whenever something doesn't go their way. So as you can see here in this piece, if you want to call it that, there's no actual journalism. All you're seeing is one big elongated version of the headlines question. No solutions are offered. It's just a way to tap into some cheap traffic to rake in those Google AdSense dollars. Check this out. Look at this YouTube page. You see that? We've got people. You see that? We've got news outlets. Once again, using that. By the way, if you guys are sick of these kind of online rags trying to stoke the fire, you can always buy some bot traffic and send it to their websites. Once Google detects this traffic, they'll be banned from the AdSense program and lose their advertising income. Now, it needs to be said that PEI is a blue province, so I don't believe we'll see their actions setting a new guideline for other premiers to follow. But it is encouraging to see a provincial government step up when the federal government that keeps aggravating this mess refuses to do their part to clean it up. So you tell me, do you feel the protesters in PEI got a raw deal, or do you think this is a much-needed step in the right direction? Leave your opinion in the comments. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already.